Welcome to Audit the Audit, where we sort out the who and what and the right and wrong of police interactions. This episode covers victim identifications, domestic violence, and bribery, and is brought to us by Police Insiders Channel. Be sure to check out the description below and give them the credit that they deserve. Before we dive into the interaction, I want to give a big thanks to the sponsor of this episode, Surfshark. Surfshark is a premier VPN service that offers unparalleled digital security for a fraction of the price of other competitors. We all know that Surfshark is one of the most secure VPN tunnels on the market, but a Surfshark subscription also allows its users to bypass region restrictions on popular platforms like YouTube and Netflix and view content that's not normally available in your country. Thanks to Surfshark, I can still watch all my favorite shows and movies, even if they were removed from the US Netflix catalog. Surfshark also offers a ton of additional features to enhance your browsing experience and secure your connection. My personal favorite is Surfshark Alert, which sends you personalized alerts if any of your sensitive information is leaked online. You can even scan your credit or debit cards and get notifications if any suspicious transactions occur. Right now, Surfshark is offering the ATA community an exclusive holiday deal that includes five months of Surfshark for free for users who choose the Surfshark One package, and six months free for users who choose the Surfshark One Plus subscription. With 24-hour customer service and a 30-day money-back guarantee, you have absolutely nothing to lose. So click on the link in the description and claim your exclusive offer now. Thanks again to Surfshark for sponsoring this episode. On July 15th, 2022, officers from the Carlsbad Police Department responded to a 911 call reporting a domestic disturbance involving a female yelling and physically attacking a male on the sidewalk in Carlsbad, New Mexico. The interactions that followed were captured on body camera. How's it going, man? Good. Hey! Were you just walking with the with the girl? Huh? Were you walking with the girl no. down Pate Street or anything like that? Okay, we got a call. It's a guy possibly getting smacked around by a girl in a pink shirt. So we're just checking there. You're I good. See someone down there. But you saw somebody down there. Pink shirt. What's all the scratches on your neck, man? Right here. Yeah. 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 What's your? Do you have an ID on you, bro? No, I don't. You don't. What's your name, man? I don't need to tell you. Yeah. No. Look, bro. I mean, it doesn't need to be complicated, man. I didn't break no laws, I didn't. I know, but I have a lawful reason to stop you. No, okay? For what? Because we got dispatched. You matched the description of the guy that was getting beat up by a girl. Okay? You have injuries on your neck. All right? It don't matter. It does matter. You don't have an ID on you, man? No, I don't know. You don't? What's your name? I don't feel like I don't need to tell you that. Okay, you feel like that, but... I haven't broken no laws. I understand. Laws. Listen, listen to me. I haven't me. committed a crime. I don't need to provide you with that evidence. Okay, but listen to me. I have a lawful reason to stop out and talk to you. Okay, so you have a lawful reason to identify yourself I to me. If you do, crime. if you don't want to identify yourself to me, I'll take you to jail for concealing your identity. It's that simple. You have scratches on your neck, which are signs of some kind of battery. Okay. All right, which, charges, which are probably from right? you, which are probably from your girlfriend, right? Oh. I'm obligated by state law to do something about this. Yeah. Okay. So, are you going to give me your name or not? If you don't want to identify yourself, we can just take you straight to jail for concealing your identity. Why, if I committed no It's that. You guys are honestly. Like, no, we're yeah. actually investigating. I, know, I, 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 see, I see what you guys are doing. Like, I okay. know you guys are doing your job, obviously, Okay. why are you talking to me? Because I don't know who I'm going to talk to. <laughs> Find out what the f I can't, because you're not giving me any information, man. You'd be the victim. I don't want to be a victim. I don't want to press charges. I don't want to be a victim. You're that bad. I ain't pressing no charges, so what are you guys gonna do? Just take my name and f me more? No. Or not take your name and take you straight to jail for concealing your identity. You guys are able to stop someone that's walking on the public street Correct. and ask them for their ID whenever you want. No. What I'm telling well, you, then, what you is I was dispatched to this area for a domestic disturbance between a chick with a pink shirt and blonde hair and a male in all black. Yeah. Okay? You fit the description, you got injuries on your neck, which means you got beat up by a chick. Okay, so I have a lawful reason. I have a lawful reason to stop and identify you. I, I would prefer not to take you to jail because you're right. You haven't done anything wrong. Okay, but at the moment that we know, at the moment you are committing a crime by not giving me your name and your date of birth. The officer claims that the potential victim is committing a crime by not providing his name and date of birth. According to Section 30-22-3 of the New Mexico Statutes, the offense of concealing identity, quote, consists of concealing one's true name or identity, or disguising oneself with intent to obstruct the due execution of the law, or with intent to intimidate, hinder, or interrupt any public officer in a legal performance of his duty. In the 1997 case of State v. Andrews, the Court of Appeals of New Mexico upheld a conviction under this 
this statute against an individual who refused to provide an officer with his address, date of birth, and social security number during a traffic stop. In reaching this conclusion, the court noted that, quote, identity is not limited to name alone, because the word or in the statute indicates that failing to give either name or identity may violate the statute, and that by passing the statute, the legislature intended, now quoting again, to provide police officers the minimal, essential information regarding identity so that they can perform their duties. Because this holding is narrowly limited to traffic stops, it is unclear when date of birth would be required in other situations, but the Andrews case demonstrates that the concealing identity statute can criminalize the refusal to supply additional identifying information, such as date of birth. Regardless, it is likely that a court could conclude that the concealing identity statute did not apply to the potential victim because the officers did not have reasonable suspicion to suspect him of a crime. As the Supreme Court explained in the 2004 case of Heibel v. 6th Judicial District Court of Nevada, Humboldt County, quote, In the ordinary course, a police officer is free to ask a person for identification without implicating the Fourth Amendment. And, now quoting again, Interrogation relating to one's identity, or a request for identification by the police, does not, by itself, constitute a Fourth Amendment seizure. However, as we have discussed many times on ATA, the Supreme Court held in the 1979 case of Brown v. Texas that an individual could not be punished under a state stop and identify statute for refusing to identify himself when there was no reasonable suspicion to believe that he was engaged or had engaged in criminal conduct. In the same vein, the Court of Appeals of New Mexico determined in the 2021 case of State v. Aguilar that, quote, reasonable suspicion to detain and question a suspect is an essential element of the charge of concealing identity, and that in order to convict under this statute, the state must prove beyond a reasonable doubt that the officer had reasonable suspicion to detain the individual charged with concealing their identity. Although the U.S. District Court for the District Court of New Mexico found in the 2009 case of Romero v. Schum that an officer had probable cause to arrest a potential witness who provided a false date of birth to an officer, this case was decided before the statute was construed to require reasonable suspicion in the Aguilar case. And the court specifically noted that the individual, quote, was not arrested for failure to provide information, but rather for providing false information. Therefore, although it is possible that a court could determine that the potential victim's refusal to provide identifying information to the officers constituted concealing identity, it seems more probable that a court would conclude he could not be convicted of this offense absent reasonable suspicion that he was engaged in, and not the victim of, criminal activity. I just don't want to get in trouble, but I didn't do nothing. Okay, but you not wanting to get in trouble is getting in trouble. I want you to give me your name. When we're in the car, I'll tell you my name. We go down there, and we can talk to the person that's coming in the car. Okay. The All right. Let's go do that then. I'll call you back. I love you. So what's going on? I just had an argument. It's nothing serious. I'm sorry. It was more on my part. So I keep my ID in the video. Okay. Where's your ID? Right here. That was my old address. I lived with my parents then. I just graduated high school about three years ago, so that's where I'm at now. I'm leaving back to Albuquerque tomorrow, and I do have court cases. So what's your relationship with this guy? Uh, that's my boyfriend for about a year now. Okay. And so what's going on between you two? Just a verbal argument. It's more than a verbal argument, because we had people calling in saying that a female was hanging on the shirt of a male. He didn't do anything like that to me. If anything, it was myself and my nails. Look at my nails. Okay, right what there. happened? I scratched myself. I do get pretty crazy myself. I put nothing on him. And I'm sitting here and telling you right now, like, I'm fine. He's fine. You have an address. You have my ID. I can give you my social security right now. I'm no problem with that, sir. Okay. It's just, I don't want no problems. This is my man. We had an argument. That's it. When someone batters another person in a domestic did violence... Did see that or did they just hear us arguing? Because I yell. I am lying. It's not even him half the time. It's me. Okay. Else, I will completely say that. I'll go to jail right now for that. Okay. That's me. Leave him the f out. 
out of it. The officers approached the potential victim's girlfriend, 21-year-old Brooklyn Shea Rodriguez, to question her about the altercation. And despite her claims that the incident was not physical, they eventually place her under arrest. In New Mexico, domestic violence is criminalized in the Crimes Against Household Members Act, which makes it illegal to commit an assault or battery against a so-called household member. Under Section 30-3-11 of the New Mexico Statutes, quote, Cohabitation is not necessary to be deemed a household member for the purposes of the Crimes Against Household Members Act, and a household member can include an individual with whom the perpetrator has had a dating or intimate relationship with. Section 30-3-15 of the New Mexico Statute states that the crime of battery against a household member consists of, now quoting, the unlawful, intentional touching or application of force to the person of a household member when done in a rude, insolent, or angry manner. In this situation, the officers were informed that an individual had seen Ms. Rodriguez hitting her boyfriend, and during their investigation, they observed several pieces of evidence, such as the scratches on the potential victim's neck and Ms. Rodriguez's fingernails that indicated that Ms. Rodriguez may have been guilty of battery, so a court would likely determine that the officers had probable cause to arrest her for domestic violence. However, while some states have mandatory arrest laws that officers conduct warrantless arrests in some instances when they have probable cause to suspect domestic violence, it is important to note that New Mexico law permits but does not require officers to make warrantless arrests in domestic violence cases. According to Section 31-1-7 of the New Mexico Statutes, Quote, a peace officer may arrest a person and take that person into custody without a warrant when the officer is at the scene of a domestic disturbance and has probable cause to believe that the person has committed an assault or a battery upon a household member. Therefore, a court would likely determine that Ms. Rodriguez's arrest was lawful under these circumstances. You're a f***ing bald Stop! Why? Go! Hey, f you. I'm telling you, respectfully, do not Touch her like that. Tries to kick me. Touch my girl like that, bro. She just broke my glasses. Chill the out, for real. Am I getting arrested? No, no, no. Bro, chill the out. She kicked me in the face. Hey, stop. You're so much of Stop. Stop. I hope she's gonna buy me some new glasses. After being placed in handcuffs, Ms. Rodriguez physically struggles against one of the officers and kicks him in the face. According to Section 30-22-1 of the New Mexico Statutes, the offense of resisting, evading, or obstructing an officer consists of, quote, resisting or abusing any peace officer in the lawful discharge of his duties. As the Tenth Circuit Court of Appeals, which has jurisdiction over New Mexico, explained in the 2019 case of United States v. Romero, quote, the New Mexico Court of Appeals Appeals has so far interpreted the phrase resisting or abusing to prohibit three types of conduct, physical acts of resistance, the use of fighting words to attack an officer, and the refusal to obey lawful police commands. Applying this standard, it is highly likely that a court would conclude that Ms. Rodriguez's actions constituted resisting. Additionally, Section 30-22-24 of the New Mexico Statutes provides that, quote, battery upon a peace officer is the unlawful, intentional touching or application application of force to the person of a peace officer while he is in the lawful discharge of his duties, when done in a rude, insolent, or angry manner. And Section 30-22-21 states that, quote, assault upon a peace officer consists of an attempt to commit a battery upon the person of a peace officer while he is in the lawful discharge of his duties, or any unlawful act, threat, or menacing conduct which causes a peace officer while he is in the lawful discharge of his duties to reasonably believe that he is in danger of receiving an immediate battery. Accordingly, it is almost certain that a court would find that Ms. Rodriguez's kicking of the officer constituted both assault and battery. Hey, will you get your, do you have a spit hood, Jake? What? A spit hood? No, no one's gonna know. I'm gonna jail, huh? She's got a good horse kick. Okay. Have a seat. Get your You either gotta sit in there or you're gonna get dragged in. Are you coming? No! So sit up? No! Be a f***ing bald f***ing white Okay. You have white teeth on you three times a f***ing day, you dirty ass I'm not married, No so. one wants to f***ing you! I'm trying to be difficult, obviously I'm sorry.
do you want me to say? How much you want me to pay you? How much? What's worth it for you? What? What do you want? Don't talk like that. You'll just get yourself in more trouble. After she is treated at the hospital and placed back in the back seat of the police cruiser, Ms. Rodriguez asks one of the officers how much he wants her to pay him, presumably in exchange for releasing her. Under Section 30-24-1 of the New Mexico Statutes, quote, Bribery of public officer or public employee consists of any person offering to give, directly or indirectly, anything of value to any public officer or public employee with intent to induce or influence such public officer or public employee to delay in or omit to perform any public duty required of him by law. As the Court of Appeals of New Mexico explained in the 1986 case of State v. Tabaha, quote, A duty is that which is required by one's station or occupation. The critical word is required. The court then identified examples of legislatively established duties, including Section 3-13-2 of the New Mexico Statutes, which requires that, now quoting, The police officer of a municipality shall apprehend all disorderly persons and apprehend any person in the act of violating the laws of the state or the ordinances of the municipality and bring him before competent authority for examination and trial. In this scenario, Ms. Rodriguez's statements seem to be an offer to give the officer money that was intended to induce or influence him to not complete the arrest. As a municipal police officer has a legal duty to apprehend disorderly persons and individuals caught violating the laws of the state, it seems likely that a court would conclude that Ms. Rodriguez attempted to illegally bribe the officer through her offer to pay him in exchange for her freedom. Obviously, it is a matter of what trouble I'm in because I didn't see nothing and I'm in the of a back cop car. What did I do wrong? As far as I know, you kicked one of the officers. And where's the video? Well, it's on their body camera. Y'all are gonna take his side? A man's side? I didn't do shit to you. I didn't do shit to you. So you can't get the fuck out like a normal person. So you're like a lady? No, I like a lady. You know what I mean? Not if you're kicking the door. I didn't do nothing wrong. Dude, we're gonna figure that out. Okay, well then call my lawyer. We'll call him there when you Call out. my lawyer. We'll put you on the phone when you start that. Uh, I ain't going nowhere. I ain't going nowhere. Ms. Rodriguez was booked into the Eddy County Detention Center and held until July 19th, 2022. On July 18th, 2022, Ms. Rodriguez was charged with battery upon a peace officer, assault upon a peace officer, criminal damage to property, resisting, evading, or obstructing an officer, and battery of a household member. And on June 29th, 2023, she pled no contest to the assault upon a peace officer and resisting, evading, or obstructing charges, while the other three charges were dismissed as part of a plea deal. It is unclear whether Ms. Rodriguez or her boyfriend filed any complaints regarding the Carlsbad officer's conduct during the encounter. Overall, the Carlsbad officers get a C-, because although they most likely remained within their authority during their interactions with Ms. Rodriguez and ultimately released the victim without unlawfully arresting him, they repeatedly threatened to arrest a potential domestic violence victim for refusing to identify himself when they likely did not have the legal power to do so, and disparaged him for getting, and I'm quoting, beat up by a chick. Not only does the use of sexist language reveal a misogynistic attitude that is highly concerning when coming from a police officer, but the officer's statements also demonstrated an alarming lack of empathy for the potential victim of physical violence. According to the National Domestic Violence Hotline, although there are generally fewer male victims of domestic abuse than there are female victims, there are likely many more men who do not report or seek help for their abuse for very various reasons, including the fact that, and I'm quoting, the abuse of men is often treated as less serious or a joke. The language used by the Carlsbad officers seemed to imply that the apparent abuse in this situation was a joke, which could serve to perpetuate the underreporting of crimes by male domestic violence victims. This encounter demonstrates the importance of officer demeanor when questioning victims, and how a lack of professionalism can cause more damage than just subjecting a citizen to a discourteous interaction. Ms. Rodriguez gets an F 
for apparently battering her boyfriend, failing to exercise her right to remain silent, physically resisting and kicking an officer lawfully placing her under arrest, and seemingly attempting to bribe an officer to secure her release. Although the officers likely had probable cause to arrest Ms. Rodriguez when they first approached her, as her boyfriend did not wish to pursue charges against her, she had a reasonable chance of ultimately having the charges dropped and walking away from this incident without any criminal convictions. However, because she chose to physically resist and attack the officer arresting her, she ended up with two misdemeanor convictions on her record. And as the battery upon a police officer charge that was dismissed as part of her plea agreement was a felony, well, she was fortunate to resolve the situation without a felony conviction. This interaction shows how citizens can make their circumstances much worse by making poor decisions, such as resisting arrest during police encounters. Let us know if there is an interaction or legal topic that you would like us to discuss in the comments below. Thank you for watching, and don't forget to check out my second channel for even more police interaction content.